ಯಾಪ್ರಾಣ ಸಂಭವತ್ಯಿಥಿರ್ದೇವತಾಯಿ ಗುಹಾಂ ಪ್ರವಿಶ್ಯ ತಿಷ್ಟಿಂ ಯಾಭೂತೆಜಾತ He sees that very Brahman who sees that Aditi, comprising all the deities, who takes birth as Hiranyagarbha, who is manifested in association with the elements, and who is seated in the cavity of the heart after entering there. Shankaracharya's Tika Furthermore, Ya Adithi, that Aditi, so called because of enjoying Adana, all such things as sound, who is Devata Mai, comprises all the deities, and who Sambhavati takes birth, Pranena, as Hiranyagarbha from the Supreme Brahman. The portion He who sees that Aditi as existing in the cavity of the heart after having entered there is to be explained as before. That very Aditi is being distinguished, Ya, which, Bhute Bihi, as associated with the elements, Vyajayata, took birth, that is, was created. Aranyornihito jata veda garbha iva subhrito garbhini bihi Dive dive ijo jagrivad bhir havishmat bhir manushye bhiragnihi Etadvaitat The sacrificial fire lodged in two fire-producing pieces of wood as also the fire lodged in the hearts of yogis that is well protected, just as much as the fetus is by pregnant women, and the fire that is adorable every day by vigilant men with oblation and contemplation. That fire, too, is but this Brahman. Besides that jata veda fire, which is nihitaha, Lodged as the deity of the sacrifice, Aranyo, in the upper and lower pieces of wood, by rubbing which fire is produced, which, as the eater of all oblations, is lodged in the individual person as Virat in the heart, and which is Subrataha, well protected by the men of contemplation, Garbaha Iva, just as the fetus is well protected, garbini bihi, by pregnant women through food, drink, etc., that are not condemned. The meaning is that, just as in the world the fetus is well protected, similarly the fire is protected by the priests and meditators. Moreover, that agnihi, fire, which is idyaha, laudable and adorable by sacrificers and meditators in the sacrifices and in their hearts. Dive, dive, every day, jagrivad bihi, by the sleepless, vigilant, manushye bihi, by men, havishmat bihi, who are possessed of oblations, ghi, meditation and contemplation, tat, That fire, Etadvai, is this only, the Brahman that is being discussed. Namaste. Well, these are a couple of very interesting verses. In verse 7, he introduces the name Aditi, which is capitalized in the translation. But uh, he says... It is derived from Adana. Adana can mean food as a noun or eating as a verb. And consequently, uh, Aditi has a meaning of the eater, death in this case. 
boundlessness, immensity, inexhaustible abundance, unimpaired condition, perfection, creative power. And of course, it's also the name of one of the greatest goddesses, a deity, meaning infinity, or the eternal and infinite expanse. And she's often mentioned as the daughter of Daksha. And you remember Daksha from Shiva Purana? He's the one who got in so much trouble for having an argument with Shiva. And his other daughter immolated herself with yogic fire as a result. So who is Daksha? He's the son of Brahma. And Brahma is the first Prajapati. He's the one who creates the elements into their forms and then populates them with living creatures. But before Brahma does this, he creates the Hiranyagarbha, the golden egg, which, when it hatches, is Virat. And Virat is created before the elements are manifested, while they're still in an unmanifested state. So even before the sons of Brahma, known in the Puranas, such as Daksha, the Hiranyagarbha is there, and here he is called Aditi. So this is way before the Aditi goddess or any of those Puranic characters. Uh, this is in the very beginning of the universe when all the elements were still in a virtual state, unmanifest. So what does that mean? Well, he is present in the hearts of all living entities. And how is that possible? Well, the next verse explains that the sacrificial fire is lodged in two pieces of wood. That is, when we make fire the old-fashioned way, we rub two pieces of wood together. One is on the bottom like a platform and it has a hole in it or a, de a depression. And then the other one is held vertically and rubbed between the palms, creating friction, which eventually generates a spark. Why do we bring this up? Well, because just like fire is potentially present in wood, in the same way, the self exists within the heart of every living entity. Try to understand. The cause exists within the effect, and the effect exists within the cause. In other words, the fire is latent within the pieces of wood. They simply have to be put into the right relationship and given a certain amount of energy. And that raises their temperature to the point where it creates fire. Then that fire can spread to any amount of fuel. Fire is not limited to how much fuel it can burn. You keep giving it fuel, it'll burn as long as you can keep that up. It also means not only is the effect latent in the cause, the cause is latent in the effect. Let's use the example of fire again. Because, well, I mean, let's say you start a fire with a match or any piece of wood or anything burning. That is already fire. That you take this fire and you touch it to a piece of fuel, combustible material, and then the fire spreads. So usually when people strike a match to light a fire, they throw the match into the fire, isn't it? So the cause exists within the effect, just as the effect exists within the cause. But in the case of virat, in the case of the self, it means that the universal self, universal consciousness, the abstract, transcendental cause of everything, exists within each one of its effects. In other words, the living beings. Om Purnamidam 
Purnamada, Purnat Purnam Udachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnam Eva Vishishyate. This, the cause, the self, is full and complete. And that, the effect, the creation, is also full and complete. And then so many complete living entities, complete units, independent, or apparently so, <laughs> emanate from this creation, from this cause and this effect. Yet, the cause itself remains undiminished, full and complete. You see, this is the paradox of the creation that very few people can understand or explain how it is that the God, if you want to use that term, <laughs> I don't like that term God because it has so much uh, philosophical baggage from Christianity, but let's just use it provisionally. God creates the world, yet is not diminished by it. How is that possible? The world is so great. Well, the world doesn't really exist in the same way that God does. The world is virtual. It's an illusion. It's a mirage. So just like the rope and the snake, the snake doesn't really exist. More so, the snake has no relation with the rope at all. It's not like the snake is present in the rope somehow. But because of our illusion, the snake seems to exist. And it only exists as long as we don't know the truth. So in the same way, <laughs> the world, as an independent, real creation, only exists because we imagine it to be so. If we actually look at the world, and analyze it deeply with intelligence, we can see it's not real at all. It's like the snake. It's something imagined and superimposed on the self. So this is how the creation is made without diminishing the self at all. It's virtual. It's an illusion. It doesn't really exist, at least in the same way that the self exists. I mean, you could say that the snake is real in the sense that it's a real illusion. And in the same way, this material world is a very convincing illusion, as Einstein is quoted as saying. A very persistent, very realistic simulacrum of a real creation. But it's not real. And the proof that it's not real is that it's temporary. Everything within it is temporary. Everything in this world is constantly changing. It's never the same from one instant to the next. So you can't dip your foot in the same river twice. Huh? That's the old uh, philosopher saying. Herodotus, I think, anyway. Some old Greek or Roman philosopher. You can't step in the same river because... By the time you make your second step, the river has flowed. And similarly, as time flows, the river of time is constantly changing. Every single object in this material world, the molecules are vibrating according to the temperature and changing their positions ever so subtly. Everything is becoming worn down and burnt up. Even though it may go very slowly, so that you don't notice the difference day to day. Still, it is going on, and everything in this world will be consumed by time. That time resides in the heart as the self, as aditi. And this aditi in time consumes everything. That is the reality. And I can tell you from personal experience, if you meditate on the heart as 
the supreme, as the all in one and the one in all, as the paramatma, uh, the sum total of all living entities, virat, then you will get some wonderful reciprocation. And that will lead to perfect self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.